Hi, I'm Gary Trenda. I'm a RF Applications Engineer for Sound Devices. And today we're going to talk about setup with our SL2 slot chassis that goes on our 8 series mixers. Okay, so to start we've got a A10 receiver. This is a slot mount receiver. To put it in an SL2, we're going to add a backplate to it. This is a DB25 backplate. So we're just going to attach the backplate and screw it together. Okay, so we've installed the DB25 backplate, and now we're going to slot it into the SL2. Put it into the first slot of the SL2. It's just going to slide in until we seat the connector, and then we're going to connect the SMA antenna connections for the A and B antennas. Okay, so we're also connecting our main A and B antenna inputs. Uh, for right now, we're just connecting WIP antennas to the A and B. Uh, you also want to note that on the side there are MCX connectors, which are aux out. So you can take the A and B antenna and feed them out to other equipment if you need be. Uh, those outputs are post filter and post pads. So we'll talk about those settings a little bit later, but uh, just know that any settings that you apply there are going to also include the aux connections. Okay, so now that we've got the a10 receiver slotted into our SL2, and we've got our antennas connected. We're going to go into the main menu on our 8 series mixer, and we're going to scroll down until we get to the super slot. And from the super slot, we're going to go into the options menu, and that's with the return favorite toggle. So your SL2 options show you receiver slot power, DC outputs, antenna power, attenuation, filter, LEDs, remote control, uh, RF history, and way down at the bottom, you're going to also see use wireless names. When we were first setting up a receiver, what I like to do is use the receiver slot power and power it on from the slot power menu, because that goes through the receiver setup, where you'll see it on the screen here saying detecting receiver type, so it knows it's connected to an A10 receiver and it sets all the defaults for that, including using the AES digital output from the A10 receiver. So we're going to go back to the SL2 options menu. Uh, DC outputs is just if you want to enable the DC outputs to send power out of the SL2 to provide power for other equipment. The antenna bias power, if you have an antenna that requires power, you can turn that on here. And then the antenna attenuation, you've got three options of 6, 12, and 18 dB worth of attenuation if you need that. For what we're doing today, we're going to leave this at, at zero or no attenuation. There's also some broad filters on the A and B antenna inputs. Uh, we're operating in the USA in the UHF TV band, so we're going to use the 470 to 614 antenna filter. Uh, there's an LED next to the antennas. We'll show you that a little later. That's uh, a red or amber LED that's going to show you when you're approaching overload for a digital receiver or overloading the SL2. Remote antenna control. Uh, if you have an antenna like a WYSICOM LFA, uh, you'd use remote antenna control here. And then if you had one of those antennas connected, you'd see remote antenna setup. There's also the RF history duration, which is from 30 to 600 seconds in 10-second uh, increments. We're going to leave that at 30 seconds, and you'll see that as we get to the RF timeline. And uh, use wireless names is something that we do support for the A10 receiver. So we're going to turn that on. What that means is if we name our uh, transmitter, that name will flow all the way through to the channel name on the 8 series mixer recorder. So now we've gone back to the SL2 receiver overview screen. You can see we've got A1 through 4 and B1 through 4 shown on this screen. Uh, each slot supports up to four channels, so you've got one through four for each. In this case, we've got our A10RX in slot A, so you see A1 and 2. We're going to select A1, and that'll show you the first channel of our first A10 receiver. Uh, in this channel, it's going to show you if we're seeing signal, what frequency we're set to. There's a level indicator on the top of the screen. High pass filter is shown on there. This will show if the transmitter is also recording in certain uh, areas of the world that's we can transmit and record. Uh, we've also got a battery indicator here. So what I'm going to do is just turn on one of the, the A10 transmitters that I have here. And you should see all of these features light up as the receiver sees signal from the transmitter. So you're seeing we're getting good signal coming in. And 
right now on this transmitter I don't have uh, the record function on. And as I get closer to the antennas, you're seeing that red line in the timeline, so it's showing you uh, RF overload. And then as I get further away from the antennas, you see there's no overload. So that's the green and the red on the transmitter. On the bottom, you'll see the TV channel listed. We're operating in UHF TV channel 25 and then sub-channel, which will correspond to the frequency we're on. If we hadn't assigned a frequency yet, on the bottom here, there's an RF scan function. So we can use our mic tone toggle to toggle into RF scan. And we'll start scanning with the receiver. It'll scan the entire uh, tunable range of this receiver, which in this case is 470 to 693. So once the scan is complete, I'm able to use my select wheel and my headphone to move around. I'm to, as I'm turning the select wheel, you can see this is zooming in and out. And as I'm turning the headphone toggle, you can see my cursor is moving. And so I'm able to scroll in and select a frequency. Uh, you can see some digital television showing up, showing up in this scan on the lower part of the frequency band. So now I've scrolled down to the area where my microphone is tuned, and I'm going to zoom in on that region. And so you can see I'm actually operating right now between a couple of different TV channels. And so if I wanted to pick a new frequency for my microphone, I could do that. So let's say we wanted to select 524. I can just click in my select knob. It'll ask if I want to assign the frequency to my receiver A1. I can hit OK. Then all I need to do is retune my transmitter. So now that I've retuned my transmitter, you can see the receiver is locking on that new frequency that we've selected. The last thing we got, want to go through here is the options for the SL2 receiver. You can use the return toggle favorite to look at the options. So from here we can select user groups. This is if you've got a custom group of frequencies programmed into your A10 system. We can change the TV channel map. This is if you're in an area that uses a 7 or an 8 megahertz TV channel. We're in the USA, which uses 6 megahertz wide TV channels. Uh, orientation, if you did want to flip the screen orientation upside down, that's available here. Uh, your system info will tell you what firmware version you're on. It's a good thing to check that you're on the latest version of firmware. And you can also update the firmware from here if you need a firmware update. Now we're going to show you an example of an RLF overload. We've got our transmitter set to high power and we're coming in. As we start to get close to the receive antennas, we'll start to see those yellow LEDs turn on. And then as we get right up to it, you'll see a red LED and you'll see RF overload on the screen of the receiver. So if you are finding that you're seeing overload lights on your antenna inputs or if you're seeing the RF overload indicator on your receiver, a couple things you can do, if you've got plenty of range, you can try turning down the power on your transmitter. Uh, you can also try increasing the distance between the transmit and receive antennas. Uh, the last option that you can try on this is to change the attenuator on the SL2. We showed you that in the SL2 options menu. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.